You ever smell a big old bucket of strawberries and you're like, mmm, summer. Hello everyone, welcome to Peach Dish Discovery. I'm Katie, I'm the nutritionist for Peach Dish, and today we're going to have a very good time because we're learning all about strawberries. Strawberries are juicy, sweet fruits um, that most of us see in the late spring or early summer. And I say fruit in quotations because strawberries are actually technically not fruits and they're not berries. So technically and botanically speaking, a fruit will have the seeds on the inside. So uh, other things like cherries or even tomatoes or cucumbers, those are technically berries and fruits. Strawberries, on the other hand, are known as accessory or aggregate fruits because they act as kind of a fleshy receptacle for the seeds on the outside. <laughs> Way to sell it. <laughs> so the seeds on the outside are um, technically not seeds either. They're called the keens, and they are, in fact, the fruits of the fruit, the strawberry. They have the seed inside of them. Each berry will have around 200 or so seeds on it. Um, that's just a rough estimate, depends on the size of the berry. On very rare occasions, they can germinate and sprout right on top of the strawberry. Um, this happens to be called a viviparry, and it looks really creepy. According to the USDA, Americans consume around three pounds per person per year of fresh strawberries. Um, this isn't counting frozen strawberries, which would probably account for maybe one to two more pounds per person per year. Strawberries are grown in every state in the U.S., but California makes up three quarters of the full production uh, nationwide. If you're curious, our neighbors to the south, Florida, comes in second, and our neighbors up north, North Carolina, comes in third. As far as the name strawberry goes, um, it's not entirely clear where strawberry came from. A lot of people assume that it's because these berries tend to grow in straw, so like pine straw, um, which would make sense, of course. Another theory is that strawberry is a corruption of the word strown berry, as in the berries are strewn about. And this is because strawberries tend to grow um, in runners, so they tend to gather along the ground and seem maybe strewn about. Suppose that would make sense as well. Humans have harvested and enjoyed strawberries since ancient times, or at least that's when it was first recorded in ancient Roman literature. In fact, it was often used to treat illnesses. It was used as a medicine. Um, they would use it for things like fevers or sore throats, um, but often it was for depressive illnesses or depression. I suppose it's possible that strawberries could treat um, depression in a way, um, strawberries are high in antioxidants, just like all other berries, and antioxidants work to eliminate uh, free radicals that would cause harmful oxidative damage to our cells. So perhaps that could be a link. It's also possible that eating strawberries just makes you happy. It makes a lot of people happy, so. <laughs> of course, wild strawberries existed during this time, um, but it wasn't until the 1700s in France when the first garden strawberry was cultivated. When I say garden strawberry, I'm thinking of the strawberry that was intentionally uh, grown to be eaten later. These strawberries were probably sweeter and a lot bigger than your wild strawberries, which tend to be sour and pretty small for the most part. Now, you can plant strawberries um, via the little seeds on the outside. However, most of the time, um, it's runners or stolons that are used to uh, plant strawberries. A runner, or a stolon as it's also known as, is when a plant will produce a stem that actually goes underground and then a new plant can be formed from that stem. It sort of reminds me of a spider plant, if you know what that is, where it's a big fern and then little ferns grow off of it. Berry season will depend on the environment and the climate in which the strawberry is growing. Um, they tend to like it when the weather's between 55 and 75 degrees, after the last frost for sure. Um, and then they also tend to like slightly acidic soil, you know, just so in case you're trying to plant some strawberries. 
In Georgia, the peak season is between April and June, and that also happens to be the peak season in California. Although in California, the climate allows for strawberries to grow year round. Strawberries are a little bit tricky to grow because they're very sensitive to stress, as are we all. But um, <laughs> they're actually, they're, they can be affected by over 200 different pests, including slime molds and something called leaf spot. Um, it's best if you were to water them at their roots only, not the leaves or the fruits, um, just to make sure any fungus doesn't have a chance to grow. The berries, um, once you start seeing them, should be harvested about every other day. Just check them regularly. Um, I would wait until the berries are nice and plump and they look ready for the eating because they don't really ripen um, once you pick them. And when I say ripen, I mean they don't develop any more of that strawberry flavor that we want. They will, um, I guess, get softer and maybe a little bit more sweeter off the plant but you don't get more of the strawberry flavor, so. That's why sometimes your strawberries from the farmer's market might be more strawberry than the strawberries you'd find at a grocery store because they may have been picked a little bit early in order to travel a long distance. But if you really want that strawberry taste, you should head down to your farmer's market because it was probably picked like maybe one or two days ago and you're gonna get the most strawberry bang for your buck. Furthermore, strawberries are a really great example of a fruit that gets more flavorful and tastier when they're grown in the right season and with love. And this is because, as we were saying earlier, strawberries are very sensitive to stress. They're kind of sensitive in general, so the way a strawberry tastes and looks is very much affected by the weather that season, the watering patterns, the sunlight, a whole mess of things. Um, and it's really up to your farmer to make sure they're taking really great care of it. Different varieties of strawberries will come in different colors and, um, I guess, sweetness levels as well. And if you're curious, of course, the red color is the most common color that we'll see, but there are also white strawberries and purple strawberries. The most popular way of eating strawberries is probably fresh, just right out of the little container that you got it. Um, maybe with some whipped cream or even like a little sprinkle of sugar if you want or just exactly how it is. You could also uh, slice them up and use them as a salad topping or for any other savory preparations. So you can actually eat the whole strawberry, um, leaves included. So if you're ever making something like a smoothie or if you're throwing them into a salad, you don't have to slice it off if you don't want to. Of course, if the taste or texture bothers you, you can, you can compost it for later, but um, Maybe just save yourself some effort next time. And if you don't want to compost the leaves, you can save them. You can save the leaves for tea by drying them out and then steeping them later on. Um, they do retain some of that strawberry uh, smell and flavor. Um, and you can also use that to infuse waters or maybe booze, if you like. Just a thought. As far as savory preparations for your strawberries goes, you can make them into a salsa, maybe sub out the tomatoes and use strawberries instead, or just add some in. You could crush them and use them as meat marinades or salad dressings, or you can make them into strawberry pickles. Strawberries have a very uh, special flavor and scent that only strawberries have. Um, and it's actually taken a long time for scientists to nail down exactly what makes um, strawberry flavor strawberry-like. In fact, there are over 300 compounds that contribute to the strawberry's overall scent and flavor, and a couple dozen of them are the primary ones. So there are compounds that contribute to the fruitiness of a strawberry. There are also compounds that contribute to the caramel like flavors in strawberries, and there are compounds that contribute to, interestingly enough, this fresh cut grass-like flavor that makes a strawberry a strawberry. Strawberries are special in this way because other fruits like maybe raspberries or bananas have uh, fewer more specific compounds that contribute to their flavor. So strawberry, it's a little bit harder to nail. Red strawberries get their color from anthocyanin compounds. They're just phytochemicals um, shared by a lot of the reddish or purple colored fruits or vegetables you might find like grapes or red cabbage or red onion. Um, as we mentioned before, the white strawberries, um, they don't have the anthocyanins, so they don't have that red pigment. They're raised in a small amount of sunlight so that they don't produce 
um, enough anthocyanins to show through as red to us. And some say that these white strawberries actually taste sweeter. They have a, a little bit of a different flavor profile. A lot of people say they taste like pineapples, which is that red pigment right here. Now it's time for some very good fun facts. The fear of strawberries is called phobia. So if you have a friend who's afraid of strawberries, now you know what that is. National Strawberry Day is annually on February 27th. However, Strawberry Shortcake Day is on June 16th, so uh, get ready. It's June 14th. Never mind. <laughs> Cut. It's June 14th. <laughs> June 14th. But you can celebrate on the 16th. Lastly, Madame Tallien, who was a member of Napoleon's court in France way back in the day, um, she really loved strawberries. She would actually bathe in, it's said to be about 22 pounds of strawberries. Um, like most citizens back then, they didn't bathe every day or even every week like we do. Um, this bath, this strawberry bath, probably took place about once a year. As far as washing goes, it's most important to wait until right before you eat or cook with your strawberries to wash them. If you wash them too early, they might get soft too fast. So just be patient. When it's strawberry season, you may be tempted to grab a whole giant bucket of strawberries because they are that good. And you should, um, because they're easily preserved. Um, if you don't eat them fast enough, you can always freeze them and use them for later. Or another option is you could make your own jam. It's pretty easy to do. Maybe just do a quick little Google search if you like. This particular jam is actually made by our friends at Fairywood Thicket Farm. They're located in Fairburn, Georgia, so not too far from us in Atlanta. Now to be fully transparent, strawberries are very sensitive, as we mentioned before. So with our peach dish meal kits, we don't ship fresh strawberries just because they will not show up to your door in the right uh, condition for you to eat and serve them. However, we do send strawberries in the form of a tasty artisan made jam like this one. One of our favorite recipes to use this jam right here is strawberry and poppy seed cupcakes with a lemon mascarpone frosting. First, you'll preheat the oven to 350 degrees Fahrenheit and you'll lightly grease your cupcake tins with cooking spray or oil will do. Now zest your lemon, um, squeeze out one tablespoon of juice, and then save the remaining lemon for another use. Now in a separate bowl, whisk together egg and half of the jam. Now whisk in half a cup of buttermilk and save the remaining buttermilk for another use. Whisk in two tablespoons of oil. Now when that's combined, fold in sugar, a pinch of salt, and some poppy seeds. Add your flour and mix just enough to combine. Be careful not to overmix. Now on a baking sheet, fill each of your cupcake tins about three quarters of the way full with the batter you just made. It's okay if you have extra batter. Bake until a skewer or a toothpick inserted in the middle comes out clean. It'll take about 15 minutes. Now while waiting for those cupcakes to bake, you're going to make the frosting. In a bowl, beat together powdered sugar and mascarpone cheese. Um, you may use a mixer if you like, but doing it by hand is fine too. Fold in the remaining strawberry jam, but leave a little bit left for garnish at the end. Um, also fold in lemon zest and the one tablespoon of lemon juice. Now once your cupcakes are done, you'll remove them from the oven and make sure they cool for at least 10 minutes. Once they're cool, decorate your cupcakes with the lemon mascarpone frosting you just made. You can use a fancy piping bag like we did, or you can actually snip the corner of a plastic bag, and that'll work just fine. Now top your cupcakes with the remaining jam, and enjoy! Well, I hope you all had a very good time today. To learn more, you can visit peachdish.com, where you can find the strawberry cupcake meal kit, or any other meal kits that contain seasonal ingredients. Peach out, y'all. <laughs> Gotta go eat my berries. My cupcakes. They're all mine. <laughs>